Hey y'all, Joe here with Southern Coastal Cooking here doing one of my final practice sessions. Tell you what, I've got some ribs down here all rubbed up. Y'all, I'm sorry I can't give away too many secrets here in this session because the competition is watching. I'm telling you what, the competition is stiff. But I do have my uh, Heritage Farms Cheshire pork right here. So uh, that's what we're using throughout the competition and through some of this training. Uh, heck, I hope I have enough ribs left over for the comp. But anyway, so that's what we're going to use. I'm going to put these on the cooker on the Kingman here uh, in a few minutes. And then I'm going to do all the chicken up because the, the pork takes longer than the chicken. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do is get these the ribs. They come, I mean, perfectly trimmed, just about membrane removed, stuff like that. So I just got them seasoned up, had them sit in the refrigerator for a little bit. And go ahead and put them on the smoker here in just a second. All right, y'all, I'm about to go ahead and put these ribs on here. Put them on the stack side. I got it set to where my stack sides run a little bit cooler. That's what I want for my ribs. So I'm gonna put them just like this. All right. Back a little bit. I don't want them right on that thermometer. So I'm gonna set them just like this and let them roll and get some good smoke on them. That probe all over the place here looking at temps. Y'all, I'm about to apply the uh, the chicken to the grill out here. You know, of course, the ribs have been going for about a two and a half hours. I got about 30 more minutes on them and spray them about every 30 minutes or so. I'm gonna put the chicken on here. First round of the chicken, let y'all see that here in just a second. All right, y'all, I'm putting the chicken on now. I'm also going to spr spritz the ribs down. The ribs look absolutely gorgeous. Y'all can zoom in here and just take a look at that. The color on them is amazing. In fact, I may go ahead and wrap the ribs now. I think I will. I, that color is just what I want right there. So spray those down. Go ahead and put the chicken on over here, y'all. Chicken over here to the back, like that. I've got some chicken in one of these cookie pans here. I don't know if y'all have ever seen that before. Uh, I was watching one of these competition shows and they were talking about doing it. So I'm gonna try to put the co uh, cookie pan chicken in like that, chicken thighs. And I'm gonna go ahead and wrap them ribs, y'all. They're real good. Hey y'all, well I'm out here with a Kingman and it started to rain on me, which is no fun. And I tell you what, that really affects the temperature. My temps dropped like 60 degrees, man. It started raining, and uh, I really have to stoke the fire. I mean, you know, that's all about learning your pit, you know, but uh, I've got three logs in there now burning to get my temps back up, but I mean, it was like crazy. I mean, I thought maybe my fire went out or something. Come out here, everything was fine. It's just, man, when that rain hits all that steel, it cools it down quick somehow. So uh, anyway, I've got... <laughs> I've got my tail trues going. I've got my grill eye. I've got my thermo th thermo smoke. All kind of thermometers here monitoring the pit, seeing what's going on, you know. But um, with that being said, you know, rolling on here, we're uh, doing some practice, and uh, tell you what, I've got some stiff competition going to be in this contest, y'all. Really, kind of been, you know, having to think about that, and you know what I'm going to do. I mean, we've got guys like Abe. Oh, Abe, man, he's he's something else. A guy cooks lobsters and all kinds of stuff. His, his wife's from uh, he's Filipino, and, man, he's got all this cooking experience from the Philippines. I mean, he can cook anything, man, even chicken feet. I mean, just, just awesome, man. He starts out, I mean, he's got these sauces that he does, and he's perf he perfected the chicken lollipop and stuff like that. So uh, he can cook on a bunch of different smokers, too. In fact, speaking of that, we got a, a guy named Clay. I call him the Junkyard Smoker because he's taking all these hand-me-down smokers and just working wonders with them. I mean, he's another one of the competitors. He's actually on another guy's team, but uh, he can take an old barrel or something and smoke something on it. So that's really something. We got another guy, Danny. I mean, he's, he's the one that owns the place where the contest is going to be. And, man, he's got like four, three or four Yoders. got all kind of cooking tables and... I mean, more stuff. He can shake a stick. It makes his own chimichurri sauce. I mean, unbelievable some of the stuff that he's doing nowadays. 
Um, you got uh, Brian. He's another guy. He's he's going to be a rib competitor. He is. Uh, he's fierce competition. I mean, he's been cooking on pellet cookers for probably five or six years now. Um, really got it down pat. You know, he's got all sorts of uh, stuff he's doing with his ribs. And I'm sure we got some others in there to worry about as well. Had one team I think disqualify because they tried to sneak in a pro. So. <laughs> that gives us something to watch, uh, you know, look out about. But anyway, like I said, y'all, I'm sitting here trying to keep my pit at the right temperatures, everything like that, dealing with this uh, rain. Uh, at the event, I will have a tent, you know, just in case this happens. I'll tell you what. So uh, that's what we're going to do. And uh, thank you all so much. And we'll just smoke on. I'm in there formulating a barbecue sauce as of now. Well, y'all, we had some heavy rain. <laughs> it pretty much shut my cooking on the Cayman down. But you know what? I still have my Yoder 640. I transferred everything over here. I think we'll be able to finish out on it. I, I'm, I'm gonna bring a tent for sure to the contest. I didn't. I did not know it was going to rain, so um, it wasn't really in the forecast. But I mean, it poured. It just. I mean, drenching rain. Uh, of course, you know, if I could have maintained a big fire in the Keeman, I think it would have been fine. It's running about 200 degrees right now. I don't know if you can see it out there. But uh, the deal is, it was so hot today, like 90 degrees, I had to keep a small fire in there, okay? Then all of a sudden, this big rain came along, cooled the steel and everything like that. Now, I had, uh, different people were saying that, uh, oh, well, it's just the surface temperature and stuff like that, but I had probes all in the thing. Uh, I think it just, you know, basically choked my fire out somehow with all the moisture or something like that in there. I don't know. But uh, fire will burn if I open up the little top part of the uh, firebox and shut it down and open the vents. It tends to uh, not do so great. I still got some playing with though, but I'm super happy with it. Got most of my cooking done on it. But like I said, we're finishing off over here in the other Y640. As you can see, I got it loaded down with everything here. It looks gorgeous. I mean, that's picture perfect right there. So we'll finish off in this bad boy. Well, y'all, like I say, you live and you learn. This has been a learning experience for me today. I've had just about everything that could go wrong, go wrong. Um, almost, you know. Uh, let's see what all went wrong. First off, this big rain came out of nowhere. And, uh, gosh, I had, you know, my, my cooker's going good out there, and it gets cold and drops down temp and all kind of stuff. I'm the fire going out. So then I switch in here my 640, and I find out my 640, I got my screws missing at the back. My little hinge somehow, I could have found those. No telling where they went, I have no idea. You can't, I've never had a screw come out or anything like that. Little bitty screws, too. Uh, I guess there's a bolt in there somewhere, too, so that's missing. So I'm going to have to be very careful with the door here. Um, yeah, you know, we'll see. I'm going to give it a taste tonight. Uh, everything doesn't look like I want it to because I've been moving around smoker to smoker. You know, everything got in the kingdom went down temp didn't cook exactly like I wanted it to but you know again I'm gonna publish this video I thought about just trash and all things but said you know what no this happened this is real life this happens you know shit happens you know so uh, basically you know that's what happened to me today so um, we'll see you know what I can scrounge up from all this and, and we'll just try to press on I'm fixing to pull these ribs off let me show y'all here Without this top still falling off on the right side. Yeah, it's going back. All right, look at the ribs. Ribs look really, really good right there. I say really good, you know. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and pull those off. Try those. All right, y'all. We in here with the ribs now. I right, did little shots for display. I tell you another good thing that happened today. A blessing is I did come up with my sauce for the contest and made me a sauce here. So. That's real good. But let's take a look at these ribs. Let's give them a pull test. We got two just normal Cadillac cuts here. I had some on the rack for you just so you can see the color. Um, and the double Cadillac cut is what the judges requested for this contest. And what they wanted us to do is they wanted us to give them a pull test right there and see they, how they come apart right there. And uh, this did okay. That one's a little bit bare on this bone side, but I'll take it. I'll try the other one here real quick. 
and see if we get any better. Basically, they're trying to just be able to pull them apart without just pulling the bone raw. And I guess it's all kind of too and how you start and how you pull on it, you know. Anyway, that looks good. Let's, uh, I got just a single Cadillac cut here. I'm going to try this for the bite test. As y'all know, we don't want the rib to come completely off the bone. Mm-hmm. Good mark, bite mark. Bam. That smoke flavor all over it with that kingman. Not too harsh, but good. Mm, mm, mm. That's nice, y'all. So what? Set this one aside just for a second. Let me try one more. Let me make sure that one wasn't a fluke. That sauce is chiming, man. It's chiming on in. I like that. Man, after all what happened today with that cook, I am really blessed to have that. I was really surprised. So let's give it some try. Mm-hmm. But Mark, everything like that. So very, very tasty on the ribs. Got the chicken coming up here in a minute, y'all. I know I probably got something on my mouth. I apologize. So let's try that. And again, we'll talk more about the cooking minute. I'm so glad I came up with this sauce. All right, y'all. Y'all ready to give this uh, little comp chicken a try with me? Let's see how it is. Sure does look pretty, don't it? Look at that. Oh yeah, that's nice. Find this one right here, the prettiest out of the bunch. Basically what we want to do, we want to take a bite and get that skin test. See if that skin pulls away or if that skin comes off with a bite. Mm-mm. Didn't want, didn't want to come through in that bite. Let's try another side. Isn't that good? Well, it sure tastes good. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm, that is good. But, I've been saying, I wanted to pull the whole skin off. The reason for that is, though, I think, I didn't have that problem last time. Is because the cook got interrupted, moving from smoker to smoker, stuff like that, and it caused the skin to get a little bit tougher. But I mean, other than that, it is, tastes wonderful. You know, but the skin did not come out like I wanted to, as far as just break through skin. It looks really nice. Could work on a little uniformity of shape. Taste is there 100%. I couldn't imagine it tasting any better, honestly. But uh, full of flavor. Shut full of flavor. I mean, the rubs that I've got, the sauces, everything else is just hands down on point. But um, work on that skin. That won't be too bad of a deal. Mm-mm-mm. Y'all, I've got another batch of that chicken coming up here. Um, that skin just bothered me, so I want to make sure that I get it right at least somewhat. So, uh, you know, it was fine last time. But so I've got another batch coming up. I want y'all to take a look and, and we'll taste it and see how it is. All right, y'all. Second round of chicken here. Tell you what, you really can't eat too much of this comp stuff because it is so rich. It's... Uh, you don't want oh anyway so let's test this see if it's got the bite through skin we've been looking for all right mm. not quite on this one I'm gonna try the other one though that one seems a little bit thicker than this one here. 
Let's see. Oh. But the skin is tearing. I need to work on that. Well, as y'all can see, I've still got work to do. Flavor profiles are great as far as I'm concerned. Um, I've got work on that chicken skin. I mean, I've got a way or two, I think, I can assure that, uh, you know, the skin, I didn't scrape it as much as I should have today. I mean, I was just very sparingly. I had so much chicken. I think for the contest, you know, lay out a bunch of chicken skin, probably take the best pieces and really, really scrape them down. You know what I'm saying? Uh, someone says spray them with vinegar. I don't know. Y'all think that helps? I, I, I have no idea. So I know I put the rub on the inside of them. Let them dry for a little while. But maybe I should have let them dry longer. You know, something like that. Uh, one thing I did do different in the second batch than I did the first batch is I let the chicken cook longer outside the butter bath before I put the sauce on. So I think that helped a little bit because the skin wasn't nearly, it was pretty tough on that first batch. Um, so, and that being said, I think uh, that was an important step is to let the chicken cook plain outside the butter bath. But uh, anyway, you know, we had a bunch of stuff got in our way today, but then, you know, like I said, Lord didn't give us uh, challenges not to help us learn stuff. So, did learn that the Cayman if it starts to rain, I better have a dang tent. And I'm glad I'm going to have the 640 there, too, as a backup. Um, Got to get some bolts with the back little thing on the 640 from the hinge. Think of anything else. Um, sauce. Really, really happy with the sauce. Uh, I want to thank some friends on Facebook who, uh, different barbecue key teams and stuff, who helped me kind of put the blueprints down for a sauce and start building one so I appreciate that. I used to make my own sauces. When I say make my own sauce, it wasn't for 100% from scratch but uh, I'm really happy with this. I'm happy with the taste profile so uh, that's what we am use. Man, I just gotta get, get a shower, get dried off, uh, get to bed, get the week rolling. Uh, we got a bunch of cars to sell and try to, uh, man, I really hope I can get some funding for this um, contest. Uh, you know, we're supposed to reach out to, uh, you know, local support and stuff like that, advertisement. But uh, I think I need to have a, have a sit down with my team and try to figure something out. Because as it sits right now, um, probably coming out of pocket for most of this stuff myself. But that's fine, you know. Uh, it's a passion of mine and, and, you know, I don't mind doing it. But uh, anyway, I want to thank everybody and, uh, you know, sorry I couldn't give you more tips and stuff. i tell you what, if I win, I'll let you know, you know, what I did. <laughs> Not like I won't be on the circuit or whatnot. If I lose, you probably don't want to know. No, I still let you know some things I learned. But uh, anyway, on to other stuff. I know y'all been wanting me to do a brisket and stuff. Trust me, I have been too. Man, I want to put a brisket on that chemo so bad. But the problem is I've got to practice. You got to keep up for this contest. So anyway. Thank y'all so much. Y'all please like my videos, sub my channel. God bless each and every one of you. Y'all have a good one. And uh, like I said, uh, keep watching the videos.